Hello, uh, my name is Richard. Um, this morning we're going to talk about creation, the Genesis account. Uh, I'm a retired medical doctor. My name is Dr. Richard Kent. Um, I work out of a charity called the Final Frontier Charitable Trust and we give completely free PowerPoint conferences anywhere in the world. And there are actually 12 subjects in this series. Here are the subjects, what happens after we die, evangelism is easy, creation, the Genesis account, evolution is impossible, the discovery of Noah's Ark, Sodom and Gomorrah, the Exodus crossing, Mount Sinai and the Ark of the Covenant, the crucifixion of Jesus, the Shroud of Turin proves the resurrection, the Bible is supernatural, what does God think about abortion, the pre-tribulation rapture of all Christians in our lifetime, God's perfect plan for our finances and how to have a miracle. So there are 12 subjects and you can read about these subjects and also download the entire DVD completely free and copy them and distribute them from our two websites finalfrontier.org.uk and freechristianteaching.org. We're also going to upload them to videogoogle.com where you'll be able to watch them and download them and distribute them free. Uh, so on our website, two of them, there are free downloadable DVDs, free downloadable books, free movies to watch, free conferences anywhere in the world and lots more free information. So on creation and evolution, if you look, I won't be able to tell you, tell you everything we'd like to tell you this morning, um, but, it's, but it's all on our websites, finalfrontier.org.uk and freechristianteaching.org. We have two websites because some people prefer one and some people prefer the other. Um, just a, a short copyright notice, we do actually know most of the people uh, we're quoting this morning, um, but all information and images are intended to be used under the fair use clause of the copyright law. Um, a lot of this information comes from well-known people such as Dr. Kent Hovind, Dr. Chuck Missler, Dr. Carl Bohr, Dr. David Rosevear and Dr. Roger Eklund. I do know some of those personally. Uh, the Bible starts, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. God created everything. He created the heavens, the solar system, the planets, the earth, the sky, the sea, the fish, the dolphins, the sea, the clouds, the birds, the dogs, and even you and me. In fact, to develop from a, a little egg, a fertilized egg, over nine months to you and me is a miracle. It really is a miracle. And the person who did all that creating, his name is Jesus Christ. He did that in the beginning. Now the first question is, how long has God existed? That's a very good question. How long has God existed? Well, the answer is God has always existed because he lives outside time. There are 11 dimensions and we live in height, width and depth, so we're only really familiar with three of them. Um, but we also live in time, which is one of the, God, one of the dimensions that God himself created. Um, in Isaiah 57, this is what it says. Thus says the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity. So God is outside time and he lives in eternity. Uh, the Bible uh, in the New Testament says in John chapter 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. And his name was Jesus. Colossians chapter 1 says, For by him all things were created that are in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. And what's his name? The answer is Jesus Christ. Now how old is this planet according to the Bible? Well, the Bible gives us some information about that. Today's date is the 15th of April 2009. So it's roughly, and I say roughly, 2,009 years since Jesus was born. Uh, since Jesus actually created everything, he obviously knows when he did it, and he tells us in the scriptures. And we do, do need to do a little bit of detective work, which is not very complicated, it's actually very, very simple, to find out exactly when the universe was created. So here we go. Now you can't read that, the writing's very small, but take it from me from Luke chapter 3, Luke was a medical doctor and he gave all the genealogy of Jesus Christ, all the 77 generations from God through Adam, through Seth, 
through Methuselah, through Noah and Abraham and Isaac and Joseph down to Jesus. And there are 77 generations. Of course, seven is, a, is God's supernatural number, and that's a very, very significant number. So 77 generations. Now, I've given an approximate time for each generation of 50 years. It wouldn't matter whether it's 30 years or 40 years or 50 years or 60 years or 70 years, because what we're trying to get is an approximate date of the universe. But 77 generations of 50 years comes to 3,850 years. 3,850 years. Um, so the time from um, the creation of Adam to the, to the birth of Jesus Christ is roughly 4,000 years. And the time from the birth of Jesus to now is roughly 2,000 years. So 4,000 plus 2,000 makes 6,000. So from the creation of Adam to now is roughly 6,000 years. That's from the, from the creation of Adam. Um, however, Jesus said something very important. He said it twice. In Mark 10, 6, this is what he said. From the beginning of the creation, God made them male and female. In Matthew 19, 4, Jesus said, Have you not read that he who made them at the beginning made them male and female? So, we now know that Adam and Eve were created at the very beginning of the creation. Well, since we've just worked out that Adam and Eve were created 6,000 years ago, we now know exactly how old the whole universe is. And the answer is 6,000 years. It wasn't very complicated, was it? It's very, very simple. 6,000 years ago, Adam and Eve were created and... Uh, sorry, uh, 6,000 years Adam and Eve were created and 6,000 years the whole universe was created because Jesus said they both happened at the same time. Now that is very, very different from the evolutionist time scale, which says that 20 billion years ago, there was a big bang and everything arose from nothing, what they call a singularity. The earth formed four and a half billion years ago. Life appeared on earth about three billion years ago. A man evolved from the animals about three million years before Christ. Huge, huge difference in time scales. Um, now, we'll briefly talk about theistic evolution, very briefly. Theistic evolution is, is, is a theory that some people have that God used evolution to create the universe and uh, to, to evolution to uh, create the universe and also to evolve man from the animals. Well, we can dismiss that very quickly because in Luke chapter 3, this is what it says. The, uh, the Adam was the son of God, not the son of a monkey. So Luke chapter 3, verse 38, it says, Adam was the son of God. Now, how long did God take to create the heavens and the earth? Did he take millions of years? How long did he take? No, well, the answer is he only took six days, and six literal days. After each day, the Bible says, and the evening and the morning were the first day. It, it happens six times. Now, obviously, millions of years don't have evenings and mornings, and we do need to look at the original Hebrew. The word for evening in the Old Testament is the Hebrew word Ereb, and that simply means evening or dusk. Similarly, the word uh, for the morning is the word Boja, and that means dawn or morning. So there were six evenings or dusks and six dawns or mornings. And God confirmed that in the Ten Commandments. In Exodus chapter 20, verse 8, God is talking about the Sabbath day, which is the fourth commandment. And this is what it says, But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that's in them, and rested on the seventh day. Now, God, didn't, God gives a very clear picture there of exactly what we're supposed to do. He worked for six days and had a rest on the seventh day, and that's what we're supposed to do too, and keep the Sabbath. So let's now look at the six actual days of creation. On the first day, it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God, that's the Holy Spirit, hovered over the face of the waters. Please remember that, waters, because we're going to show you later on that that's very, very important. 
uh, on the second day, God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. So we have to scratch our heads and say, well, what on earth is, is the Bible talking about? Fortunately, the Bible tells us. Because later on in Genesis, in verse 20, it says, let birds fly above the heaven across the face of the firmament of the heavens. So the answer is the firmament is the sky. So a space appeared in the water so that the sky appeared. So there was water in the stratosphere and water below the sky. And then God said, let the waters let the waters under the heavens be gathered together in one place and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters he called seas, and God saw that it was very good. So what we have now is, I don't know if you can see on that picture, you can see the, um, you can see the earth there, the crust of the earth, and under the crust of the earth was the water, and then high up in the stratosphere was a big canopy of water as well, with a sky between the two layers of water. Uh, on the third day, God created all the vegetation. God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed, and fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself on the earth. And on the fourth day, God created the sun and the moon. It says, in Genesis 1 verse 16, God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. And he also made the stars. On the fifth day, God said, let the waters abound with an abundance of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the face of the firmament of the heavens. So God created all the fish and all the birds. And God said, so God created great sea creatures and every living thing that moves with with which the waters abounded according to their kind, and every winged bird according to its kind, and God saw that it was good. And God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. So the evening and the morning were the fifth day. Now on the sixth day, God did two things. First of all, he created all the animals, and then he created Adam, and later created Eve. And we'll look at those separately. In Genesis 1, 24, this is what God said. Let the earth bring forth the living creature according to its kind, cattle and creeping thing and beast of the earth, each according to its kind. And it was so, and God made the beast of the earth according to its kind, cattle according to its kind, and everything that creeps on the earth according to its kind. And God saw it was very good. Now, it's very important that the Bible talks about kinds. We talk about species, but we're talking about the same thing. What we actually see today is lots of different kinds or species of animals, for example, dogs. We see lots of different kinds of ducks and birds and, and uh, various things that fly. Tell you what we don't see is doggies changing into birds. We just don't see it. On day six, God also created Adam, and this is what happened in Genesis 1, verse 26. God said, let us, Elohim, make man in our image according to our likeness. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Now, very important this, God is a spirit. And if he created something in his identical likeness, what did he create? Answer, he created spirits, the spirit of Adam and the spirit of Eve. And it's very important for us all to realize that we all are spirits living in bodies and our spirits will live forever. And that's very important. Um, now, in Genesis chapter 2, God created Jesus Christ, that's the Lord God, created the first living being. And it's important to realize that these are different creations. In Genesis 2 verse 7, it says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. So what's a living being? Well, it's something made out of the dust of the ground with a